Hi, this is Emlyn, and this is Rootbase. Let's jump right in. A uh, pretty simple setup here. It's essentially a tack, uh, an instrument, uh, a patch, and then a release articulation, and then a noise component that adds uh, some, some dirt and texture to the sound, either recording or uh, vinyl noise, amp noise, broken amp noise, um, electromagnetic uh, interference sound, some VHS. Uh, we'll get into all those. Uh, the essential idea was to create an instrument that has a real physical feel to it. There's something really satisfying about a big heavy thunk coming from what feels like an actuator producing the sound versus just hitting a key and, and having the computer produce it. Um, and I think you hear that in the performance of an instrument. Uh, I certainly f felt like I was playing a little bit differently when I started experimenting with this. I'll give you a taste of what this is. This is just the default program here, but it's if effectively just very simple waveforms with these uh, articulations on the front and back end of the sound itself. <laughs> Got a nice thunk to it, you know? Uh, to solo out this, for example, let's just hear these. These are just the analog waveforms here. Pretty basic. Sawtooth. The ones that make it sing, at least in terms of the polyphonic performance instrument before we get into the arpeggiator and all that is these here which are just essentially various kinds of key sounds there's some randomization going on there's some velocity sensitivity going on so pair that with the original bass sound and you kind of get a feel for what's going on with the with how it's produced. The cool thing is, because some of these sounds take a little while to actually actuate, so there may be a little bit of lead-in to the actual sound itself, the thing that you can do is you can shift that attack slightly forward or slightly behind the bass sound, which is very handy. So here, for instance, if we put the bass sound back on, these are now being struck at the same time. But I can move this back while I'm playing. Now the actuator sounds like it's really working hard to produce that sound. Somehow, like the circuit boards are slightly behind the actuator itself, move it forward, I have a nice thunk there. Of course, you can also affect the filter on this, which is super important with some of these. Velocity sensitivity, so it always plays the same volume. Bring that out a bit, maybe. A little bit of resonance. Let's cut out velocity sensitivity altogether for the cutoff. The other thing here is you can also cut off the beginning of the sample for each of these. If you just want to catch that very end transient before it fades out. For a bit more of a clicky kind of thunk there. All the way to nothing. The decay will also help that too. You can make them very short. These are almost just clicks now. And all of these for the future, which I'll get to here uh, in terms of how these work and how these behave with the, uh, the amp uh, plugins, which is I think what makes the sound kind of sing, is that these very subtle shifts here, almost like you're using a plectrum on a bass string is that very subtle changes in how the actual uh, attack articulation is played will affect how the amp 
and all the pedals coming after this actually respond to that sound. So even little clicks like this somehow produce a pretty cool sound on the other side, especially when you start playing around with uh, uh, mixing different kind of bass uh, instruments and, and release samples, and especially noise too. I'm gonna zero these out here for now, and let's just go and play around with a few of these with the release now. So let's keep switch, that's pretty cool. I'll give it a bit of a delay here to get let the bass have time to come in. And let's uh, pick a few other ones here. What's this? Nice smoky kind of sound there. Again, really basic analog waveforms, nothing funny going on. A nice selection of these here to give you a pretty universal feel. These sounds from those keyboards um, of the day uh, are pretty iconic and they're pretty recognizable. Um, some of these are very simple. Some of these get into some pretty kooky stuff. We have a nice roadie bass sound. Clubbing that sound here. My electric clubbing it here. Similar kind of sound too. Mix that with something bright here. And we have a fairly nice, let's bring that back a bit. Now we add in one of these. Now you hear that thunk right on the end? That is, that is the magic right there, especially when you're playing this. It just feels like the instrument is somehow being actuated mechanically versus just some code in the background doing its thing. We can fiddle around with what that would be. For example, the switcher again. Let's bring that out a bit. Add some noise and you start getting the picture. Here, I've got various tape and reel-to-reel -reel artifacts. Some are just straight up tape hiss. These loop uh, forever and will restart on each keystroke at a different point so that it'll never re repeat the same uh, point uh, with the same key necessarily. Uh, especially useful for the arpeggiator because when that is flying by at, you know, 120, 140 BPM, uh, you're getting some nice artifacts entering in and producing a, a pretty cool, uh, a randomized kind of noise sound. Uh, maybe broken actuators, maybe bad circuitry, maybe old dusty uh, keys, who knows? But the idea being that, it, that there's some randomization and some human uh, feel to it. Uh, that's regular tape noise. You can, of course, effect so when you come back here some old recording maybe just kind of hiding out in the background there uh, some other ones here are zero those out uh, I'll solo this out here Look at that, what a lovely, gross old sound, but just perfect for, for, the, for that bass sound. Plug that through an amp and you've got some real magic there. Even more noise. This one hears a lot of wow and flutter. As always, you can control the velocity sensitivity and, uh, and for cutoff, volume and cutoff. 
Sometimes you can have these fade in so that it sounds like you've got an overcompressed bass sound and then the noise comes through after it. Let's try over here. Yum. Let's try some more of these noise sounds. What else we got? Some lots of cracks and popping there. I believe this one's even more. I mean, that's pretty much mayhem. But each one of those crackles and, and pops there comes out in the arpeggiator and on fast play as well, which is kind of nice. Every now and then you'll get a click at the beginning of the of the uh, key, sometimes at the end, it just depends. You can mix that with uh, a bad circuits here. Another articulation that helps uh, produce that sort of broken feel. You got a real broken instrument there. How about an organ sound? Release the same idea. You can shift this behind the bass sound. So after I've released the key, it can pause a bit before it releases. Almost like the actuator is slow to respond, or who knows. How about a nice little click in here? I want to put that up a bit, give it a bit of a fade in, just a tiny bit. Same with this. Get some resonance going. some noise. How about some vinyl noise? Uh, a lot of other bass sounds here. So much to play with. Hammer bass. I mean, that thing will knock your teeth out. What else we got? Saw bass. This is a lovely one for solos. <laughs> Pulse bass, pretty classic sound here. I'm not going to run through all these. One of my favorites here, however. So much meat on this. Let's put a thunk on the end of that. Get some bass back in it. Here are some more of the noise sounds. These will make more sense as we start playing around with the plugins uh, on the end here, especially the amps. Some of the effects, the echoes as well, will pick up some of this noise. I probably wouldn't have this much volume on that, but the idea being that you can taper and, uh, sorry, tailor that as much as you want. Some VHS noise. And we have amp noise, which is pretty classic. That will just sit in the background and hum all day. We've got a broken amp. This one will go in and out of all kinds of various stages of dilapidatedness, if that's a word. So let's look at some of the uh, snapshots here. There are 80 in all. Uh, I could have kept going, uh, you know, for 10 years on these. There are so many combinations. I think it's got a very specific sound. With the 20 bass sounds that are here, I picked these pretty carefully to give an overall feel of, a, a, of that particular resonant, buzzy, actuated kind of sound from the old keyboard types, the electric pianos, the fuzz box, the noisemakers, things like that, stage, stage keyboards. Uh, this was definitely designed with a, a specific sound in mind. And so I stopped at about 80 presets, but boy, you sure could keep going. Uh, I'll play a few of these. This is uh, Ain't Got A Lot To Say. Bring out 
that sound even more maybe? How about some more volume? <laughs> It's like you're sitting under the thing. Lovely smoky sound to this one. Buzzy sound here. Some of these are fairly recognizable. There's that noise peeking through. How about some dirty vinyl there? We go through so many different ones here. Moon Touch. Super smoky sound, super smooth. I had a hard time building this instrument because I kept wanting to stop and play it. Um, so many of these are things that I know that I would use in my own music. Um, some effects coming through there. What else do we have? It's a lovely one over here on the storm. Bases, whole ton of these too. Keep in mind that is just analog waveforms, a sawtooth wave, a straight up analog thick sawtooth wave here, and a sine pluck on the end, like a plectrum coming off the string. Some of the uh, impulse responses uh, really respond to the bass frequencies, so that's why I included not just to tailor the sound, but also to cut back on some of the bass and to tame it a bit. Uh, the multiband EQ here, that is definitely helpful for some of these sounds. Uh, I tend to leave it all pretty much maxed out, and I can come in here and actually affect the, uh, the bass response here as well, and the wetness of the, of the uh, uh, impulse. Um, I'm gonna go through a few more of these before I get to the mixes there. Uh, there's a few nice on the run here, for instance, is a lot of echo going on there. Soul City. I mean, who knows what instrument that is? It just sounds cool. Take it easy. That sounds like a cross between a keyboard and a bass instrument to me. There are a ton of um, basses here. I've created uh, arpeggiators as well. Arpeggiated pads, I should say. These go pretty nuts. Some of these you might recall from, I don't know, early electronica albums from the 70s, those extended psychedelic ambient noise wall productions. What else we got here? Let's look at some noise with these arpeggiated patches here. Strange Angels gets pretty gnarly. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in the arpeggiator, the release articulation is disabled uh, simply because too much is going on and you don't need it. Uh, I found that when I was doing the testing on that, that it was just overpowering the arpeggiator's clarity. Not that I wanted too much clarity to begin with, you know that, but uh, it was just overtaking so much of the essential sound of the other uh, two that came before it that I opted just to kill it. And I think that was the right decision because uh, the arpeggiators sound fairly gnarly all by themselves without the need for that ending release articulation. Um, let's go in here and just check this out real quick. Uh, standard contact um, factory arpeggiator pretty much. Uh, on switch, you can also hold them. Um, pattern choices here, you can fix the velocity. The rate, the duration will uh, be affected as well. The swing function. Strikes. So getting back to noise, Let's just listen to that all by its lonesome here. You don't need much, do you? Let's look at a couple others here. So the effects. The lineup here is fairly straightforward. I'm going to go back to a patch we can actually concentrate on. By the way, we got some leads here. I'll play a couple of these. takes me pretty smoothly back to the mono mode here with portamento as well. We've got relative uh, portamento time, uh, gl uh, glide time. Um, we've got the human function here, which applies to pretty much everything. Uh, mono mode is useful, I think, also for the basses. Uh, depends how you play or how you record. Um, some of these leads are really pretty sweet with this. Uh, what do we got here? Kind of smoky lead here. <laughs> velocity. Um, I'm going to come back over here. That is pretty self-explanatory. Here is the human function pretty much in a nutshell. I'm going to leave that on and just hit the same key here. So this is no humanization. All the pitches are the same. It does its round robin stuff, but that's pretty much that. Now let's move this up. I'm going to try and hit the same velocity here. Now you can hear some pitchiness creeping in there. Let's go all the way to the top. So when you consider pairing that with even minor, you know, two note chords or whatever. That's a broken keyboard, but I love it. Some of the leads use more of it. Some of the uh, keyboards use a bit of it too. It keeps stuff a, uh, a little shaky. Um, of course, you can get the old wonky effect coming in here. Let's try this. So, effects. Let me go back to something usable here. How about just the default program to start with? A lot to choose from here. Um, the uh, Transient Master is super handy with some of the brighter um, attacks. The articulations on the attacks here uh, really benefit from this. 
Um, rubber band, by the way, is a great recorded rubber band instrument that I made, which just fits so perfectly with this. Let me solo this out here. I mean, you could play that pretty much by itself if you wanted. Release samples have got various other ones to pick from. I have these mostly on the back end because these tended to have a nicer sound following the bass sound than having them up front. Uh, vibraphone, for example. Just a very slight release there. Bass clarinet, nice smoky sound on the end of this. There's that on the front end too if you want it. That one seemed to work quite nicely. Six-bit double bass. This was a bit of an experiment, but it turned out to have quite nice effects, especially when piped through the mix uh, plugins later. I'll zero that out there. It's got the same thing on the back end here. That gets pretty weird sounding. Helps if I turn it on. Also helps if I have that on the right thing there. There we go. Going back to the default program, so let's look at these here. Rotator, pretty standard fare. You'll notice that some of these effects bring out the noise more, so you can play with the volume on that depending on how much you want, or just turn it off. But who wants to turn noise off? The echoes here are pretty cool. These are essentially recordings of uh, a tape echo unit, various speeds and, and sounds, some muted, some not. Um, it, the best thing to do with these is just to play around with them. Some of them are super noisy. Some of them have, have odd and unusual uh, uh, EQ profiles. Uh, best just to mess around with them. Use your frequency, uh, your filters here. Um, the pre-delay can help as well sometimes, especially when you have something in rhythm. Uh, the IR size, of course, you got to play with uh, based on the tempo that your track is running at. Uh, these are really just so open to interpretation. I'm not going to even bother to try and explain how to how to model these around whatever you're building. But they do have an awesome sound, and some of them are very long. Make it super dark here. Phaser, standard fare. You got your flanger, your chorus, your delay. Now the real meat and potatoes of this system, I think, is this section here. You've got three main mix um, styles to choose from, and they are fairly different. The tube amp and the AC box that uh, Native Instruments offers are um, I suppose the most sound alike uh, styles here, but definitely the pedal and cabinet uh, convolution are the most um, uh, distinctive. I'll choose, uh, let me go back and zero this out again, and let's just start with this. Here is the sound without it. Smoky, nothing much going on there. Add this in. A whole new character. There's a whole lineup here of various kinds of responses. Uh, I'm just going to pick some at random here. They all do something different. That one will knock your socks off. 
The drive will affect how the pedal works before it gets to the cabinet. Uh, you can turn it off as well. So now you just have the cabinet straight up and pure. I prefer a little bit of drive. With the effects, this can get pretty nuts. I'll just go to some track here and find a patch. So here we have the AC box getting used. The noise here will just come right through because it is being brightened so much. You can tame that a bit here. tube amp a little tamer but this has a, a really cool quality uh, that seems to make the patches react in very unique ways sometimes just the combination you've got of articulations and bass sound also how you filter the bass over here it kind of affects how it responds to it it's pretty cool the brightness switch of course will help bring out some of the higher ends and transients and of no uh, the noise of course Saturation helps to bring, thicken everything up a bit, of course. Uh, compression, I don't touch that too much because the bass setting is pretty good here. Uh, the space offerings are fairly comprehensive. A lot of mo mono and stereo here, you can see all mono and stereo. Um, sometimes mono is just really great to keep that bass sound centered. Uh, in the mix, it, it, it sounds uh, like it just fits right. Um, I do a lot of playing around with the wet level and the, the um, low frequency cutoff and high frequency cutoff because that will uh, help me place the sound more. That's a stereo one. Let's try a garage verb here. I mean, that just sounds like someone's back backyard garage. Who knows? Take out some of the low end there. A few more space echoes in here as well. Um, spring reverbs, these will get pretty noisy. This is a mono one. We have some stereo ones too. These are really trashy. I would probably use these sparingly, but that's just me. Uh, empty clubs are pretty cool. These are nice. These have a real spatialization to them. I use a lot less than that, maybe about that. And that's really it. There's not too much more to it. Bend range, your modulation depth, your modulation rate. Um, a lot of the functions here are really just designed to make uh, instrument creation easier for that bass sound that feels really real, uh, really physical, something that has real noise to it, uh, that could fit with just about anything. I know I'm going to use this a lot, and I think, uh, I think you will too. That's it. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.